All right, everyone, today we're gonna take and run through a couple different videos I've done actually, but we're gonna compress it all into one singular little place because apparently it drives everyone mad when you don't do that. <laughs> you don't like hunting through videos, I guess. And that's okay too. But what we're gonna talk about specifically today is how to have that proper fit on your bridge of a nose on a frame that is adjustable so that you don't have those annoying little pressure points or red marks or whatever the case may be that has driven you to look for this and hopefully you find this video. So on to what you actually care about and wanna know about is how to fix, prevent, and stop those annoying little spots on your nose. Now this, uh, it's a combination of things going on here. I've actually got a pimple, but it is a little bit, you can see just a hair right there where the pads on these are digging in. Even as light as the frame is, it is just a little bit off. And there are a few things to check for that. So right off, it's not always just the nose pads. Now, oftentimes it is because that's the easier one to mess up but it's not always. So what it amounts to sometimes if one of these is stretched out, if you are habitually one of these one-handers and I can spot you a mile away before you even come in and throw the glasses at me with one hand, <laughs> that's a pretty good giveaway, but it's not the only way. So as I mentioned, and as I'm doing here myself right now, you take them off with one hand, it tends to stretch that one side out. Now I am pretty squarely sure that, that is about 90% of my problem right now, because we can also see if we look very closely that this one is out just a little tick. Now, in this case, I don't think that's from on and off because these frames are designed in a way that the titanium material here is gonna give most of that. So it's not really that matter unless I've done something to these, thrown them across the room, stepped on them, sat on them, slept on them, some sort of combination of all of those things. Uh, yeah, it's possible. Anyways, so what we would need to do in that case is actually bring this in just a hair. Now I don't have my tools in there by handy right now. I haven't gotten all that down here in this new little cool studio area. Digging this, hope you guys are liking the setup. We're gonna do some other changes here. Focus, Matt, I know it's hard. <laughs> so the short version of that is we have a special tool. It's metal right here, nylon on this outside that allows us to really very easily get that pressure where it needs to go without damaging the frame. In this case, I don't have that, so I can't do that with solid freaking titanium by hand. Yeah, I didn't even put a dent in that adjustment <laughs> with all that pressure. It does feel better. Maybe I got it a little bit more than I thought. Still not quite there though. The big thing, of course, if it isn't that, and the obvious mark there is if pressure is on one side, typically that's going to be the problem. If it's both sides or you notice it really on one, but it's on both still, or maybe it's very obvious where the pad is making a mark, like I showed a second ago, where you've got the very obvious indentation there. So in that case, that means this pad is angled in at the bottom just a little too much. And this is all kind of intuitive actually. So you can see literally where the pressure is sitting hardest on the bridge of the nose. Fairly often we have thinner skin on the bridge. So it marks pretty easily, good or bad. It makes it very easy to get these adjustments right and get the pressure where it belongs. So in the case here where that's actually digging a little bit on the bottom, we would splay that out just a tick more so that top is in and resting more on the bridge of the nose. And you'll see, there you go. It's still just a little bit off. And what we can do is actually it's more the way it's resting versus the actual angle of it. So in this case, we would want to kick that bottom edge back in just a hair so it's not pushing up into the nose quite as much. And that you just kind of rotate there. Now I mentioned in the original nose pad adjustment video that there are special tools for doing the nose pad adjustments. They're a little bit hard to come by and they're fairly expensive. Even on the likes of eBay, you're not going to find one for under 15, 20 bucks. Now, 
If you're doing this pretty regularly, you're always messing up your glasses, it's well worth getting a nice set of pliers to just reach and grab a tweak. Super easy, super simple, and some of the adjustments you can't even do without those. That, uh, for me, that already feels a lot better. Now, I did mention my nose was already irritated a little bit because I do have this little guy going on, which is gonna be a pain to deal with because I have to adjust around that on top of everything else, which is probably why I'm having to tweak this today, in fact, because you wouldn't think about it, but that little raised bump throws off the rest of where that pad sits, which is making it fall in a different way on the nose, causing that bottom edge to dig in. And it's great. Life's wonderful. Our bodies hate us and love us and all of those things. Now, the other side is, yeah, we don't have any sort of a mark. There's no kind of indentation. Everything's sitting nicely. Yeah, the skin, I can feel a little bit of difference here and there, but I've worn glasses for so long, maybe that's just the way it is. And my nose is greasy anyways. Maybe you can see that on camera. Shiny, right? <laughs> anyway, so that's kind of the key things to keep in mind with how the nose pads should fit. Now, if you're ever in doubt, this is kind of a good trick for playing around with it, especially you newer opticians, if you're watching this, or maybe you just like working on your glasses and you wanna be an optician, who knows? I don't know why you're here, but a good little trick, and this is one somebody actually told me recently, I still think it's a little silly, but it works, okay? And that's, if you're ever in doubt on how to get the splay kind of right, you're looking for that baseline fit before you start tweaking everything else, your thumb is surprisingly a good place to start with. So you use our thumb as a bridge substitute and you can see there it kind of works in the same way. And obviously this way it doesn't and it's a little hard to flip around and do that on camera, but there you go. So you just sit it down right there at the base of the thumb and you can see the shape is somewhat similar. So for learning to do it, it's a good starting point. I think real nose is still a little bit better for a variety of reasons, including the fact that <laughs> most noses mark up pretty easily. So it's easy to see where the adjustment is right or wrong. If you wear enough makeup, it's very easy to see because when you put it on and you take it off, it's now marked to the nose pads. You will have whatever color your makeup is generally. Now that's not to say Everyone has that problem. Some of you people have your really fancy makeup and it doesn't rub off. If you take a bomb to it, it'd still be there. Yeah, anyways. I'm not gonna rant about makeup for an hour and a half or 10 minutes or 15 minutes or five minutes or anything of the sort. I just wanted to focus on proper fit and adjustment of nose pads on your glasses. And the same thing with acetate, you can tweak it a little bit, but the reason I've not done a video dedicated to that, it's a little more complex. To show it on camera is not the easiest. It needs to be done though, so I will work on that in the future. I've just gotta figure out how I can do it in a way that's going to show up well, and you guys can figure out how to actually do it on the back end yourself. It's tricky. Well, We'll figure it out. One day, I will figure it out. I will do that video. That day is not today. Today is the nose pad day. But while we're here, I said we were combining two videos and that is on the plastic frames. Now they're not generally adjustable. As I mentioned, it is possible. It's a little bit more complex. It's definitely not something everybody can do just because there's a lot more principle to keep in mind. Everything from the way the frame is made to the way the pad area is built up on the frame to what tweaks can actually change and adjust that. Now, some of it crosses over from the metal nose pads, but it's not as blank of a black and white thing as when people say a plastic frame either fits on the bridge or it doesn't. It's not necessarily true and we've seen with some companies that take a little bit more finesse, like Weibach and York, in their designs for that ergonomic fit, it just fits a lot of people's bridges right out of the box. We don't really have to tweak much of anything, which basically says that most acetate frames can fit better than we let them. I don't know what their secret sauce is, but I swear I can put the same frame on like 50 faces and it still fits. I don't know. Yeah, it just does. I don't know. But I'll stop rambling about random frames 
and acetates and bridges and all sorts of weird things that make you guys crazy. If you've made it this far in the video, you're probably already a subscriber. If you're not, hit that subscribe button for me because you will stay up to date on really cool new videos. We're gonna get back into doing more of the review videos instead of just the techie stuff. So there you go. I will catch you guys next time. Let me know what you thought of this video and if it helped you or didn't. Eh, hopefully more help than didn't, but <laughs> someone always proves me wrong. On that note, I will catch you guys next time.